What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to another video dealing with perfect square trinomials, difference of squares, so just some further practice. In all of these cases though, we're gonna be dealing with multivariables. So notice we have a mix of variables in all of these. So for example, in part A, we have a mix of X and Y. And all of these are either gonna be perfect square trinomials or a difference of squares. A difference of squares is easy to tell the format of it. A perfect square trinomial, sometimes it's tough to tell that it's a perfect square trinomial. You only realize it is after you do the decomposition process. But if it is a perfect square trinomial, I'll do the decomposition process. And then I'll also show you how it fits into that formula that we've been going over. If your teacher's not going through that formula, that perfect square trinomial formula, as I mentioned in the other videos, you could just ignore that portion, right? So starting with part A, we got 9x squared plus 48xy plus 64y squared over here. And first thing we want to check, can we take anything out? And notice between the 9, the 48, the 64, can't take anything out of that. And the variables, there are x variables in these two expressions, but there's no x variable here. There's y variables in these two, but there's no y variable here. So let's go into decomposition, see if it works. So notice the a value is 9, the b value is 48, and the c value is 64. And then what's the ac value going to be? It's going to be 9 times 64, which would give us what, 6, 576, like that. And then so we have to find two numbers that multiply to 576, add up to that B value of 48. And those two numbers would be 24, 24, 24, 24. Right? And so because these two numbers are the same, as we've seen in previous examples, we know we're dealing with a perfect square trinomial in this particular case. But again, sometimes it's tough to see that right away. And so from here, we just decompose that middle term. like that, and then from here we take out a 3x, so we'll have 3x plus 8y. And then from these two we could take out a what over here? We could take out an 8y, and we'd be left with 3x plus 8y. And so notice then we could take out that uh, binomial common factor, and we're left with 3x plus 8y again. And so this here, it factors into 3x plus 8y squared. So it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. And then if you wanted to show initially that it's a perfect square trinomial or maybe even check for it, what you got to do, let me write the formula over here just because we'll probably be using it throughout the video. So we know the perfect square trinomial formula is that right there. And so notice we could take the 9x squared, we could rewrite as 3x squared, the 64y squared, we could rewrite as 80y squared. So notice the a value is 3x, the b value is 8y. Not the same as this a, b, and c. This is from the decomposition process. Let me actually maybe erase this so you're not getting confused. This a and b value is from the formula for the perfect square trinomial. And so we have the a value, the b value, so the mid value has to be 2ab, 2 times 3x times 8y. And notice that when we do multiply that, we end up with this term, right? So we could tell it's a perfect square trinomial from the beginning and then it factors into a plus b squared, 3x plus 8y squared. But again, sometimes, if a question doesn't mention that it's a perfect square trinomial and they just say factor, sometimes it's tough to tell that uh, it's a perfect square trinomial right from the get-go, okay? But uh, once you do the decomposition process, then you could tell it is. Moving on to part B, we got 48m uh, squared minus 120mn plus 75n squared. First thing we check, can we take 
anything out. Notice between the 48, the 120, and then the 75, we can actually take out uh, three. And so we'd end up with 16m squared minus 40mn plus 25n squared, like that. So we initially took out a three, and now let's see if we could factor this remaining bracket. So again, it's definitely not gonna be a difference of squares, right? A difference of squares is usually only two terms in that a squared minus b squared format. So if anything, it's gonna be a perfect square trinomial. It is gonna be a perfect square trinomial, but again, unless you know that from the beginning, it's kind of tough to tell from here. If you do break it down into that formula, you'll have 4n squared minus, and then let's actually work with the n's first. So we could tell the a value is 4n, we could tell the b value is 5n. So we'll have minus two times the a value of 4n times the b value of 5n. And notice that when we do indeed multiply those, we end up with that middle term, negative 40mn. Okay, so you can do it that way, but uh, if I do a decomposition, a value is 16, the b value is negative 40, the c value is 25, the a c value, 25 times 16 would give us 400. And then we have to find two numbers that multiply to 400 and then add up to that b value of negative 40. So that would be negative 20, negative 20. Decompose. that and then take out from here a 5n, 4n minus 5n like that and then we could take out a 4n minus 5n. What are we left with? 4n minus 5n, right? So that middle bracket or sorry, yeah, the bracket does factor into two of the same factors. So it is indeed a perfect square trinomial, but don't forget that three at the beginning that you took out. You gotta write that as well. Okay, moving on to uh, part C. So we got 72 X cubed Y minus 50 X Y cubed. From here, Notice that from the 72 and the 50, we could take out a two. We could definitely take out an X because we have an X to the one and X to the three. So we take out the lowest exponent, which is X to the one. Then we have a Y to the one, Y to the three. So we could definitely take out a Y. So we could uh, divide everything. So once we take it out, we divide everything by what we took out. So we'd end up with 36 X squared minus uh, 25 y squared, like that. Okay, so let's keep track over here with what we're doing. We took out a 2xy, now let's see, can we take this and factor it? And notice that it is a difference of squares because we could rewrite this as 6x squared minus 5y squared. So a squared minus b squared, so the a value is 6x, the b value is 5y, and that factors into 6x minus 5y, 6x plus 5y. a minus b, a plus b. Okay, so that ends up being the final answer. Don't forget that greatest common factor that you took out at the beginning, the 2xy. Moving on to part D, we got 5x cubed minus 30x squared y plus 45xy cubed. So let's actually um, take out the greatest common factor first. So notice between 5, 30, 45, we could definitely take out a 5. And notice that there's also an x present in all the terms. So we could take out an x, lowest exponent, is one, so we could take out a 5x from everything. A y we can't take out, it's here in both of these, but it's not 
in this term over here. So if we take out a 5x, 5x cubed divided by 5x would give us x squared minus this divided by that would give us 6xy plus this divided by that would give us 9y squared. And so from here, what we want to do, we want to check, can that bracket factor? And it indeed can factor. It is actually a perfect square trinomial uh, because those n terms, we can rewrite like that. And then we should have minus 2 times the a value, which is x, times the b value, which is 3y. Notice that when we do multiply these, we do indeed end up with negative 6xy. Um, so it is a perfect square trinomial. If you're not using the formula, if you do have to use decomposition, a value is 1, the b value is negative 6, the c value is 9. Two numbers that multiply to 9. Sorry. Then we got to get the AC value, my bad, which is 9 times 1, which is the same thing in this case because that leading coefficient is 1. That's not always going to happen, though, as we've seen in previous cases. So we got to find two numbers that multiply to AC and then add up to that B value of negative 6, negative 3, negative 3. And just even here, we could tell because these two numbers are the same, it's going to be a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so just showing you different ways, giving you different looks of how you can take something like this and factor it. Again, my preferred method is to just always be using the same method of decomposition. But if you are using that formula, you can do that as well. You should just get the same thing. Uh, we could take out a negative. 3y. There's a negative here, so we're definitely taking out a negative between 3 and 9. We could take out a 3, and then y is common in both, so we could take out a y to the power of 1, the lowest exponent. What would we be left with? x minus 3y. Now we could take out an x minus 3y. What are we left with? x minus 3y. So it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. This bracket factors into those two brackets. So final answer would be that, uh, sorry, x minus 3y squared, right? Because these two brackets are the same. And then finally, moving on to part E, we got negative 900x squared plus 1600. Now, a couple of different ways you can go about this. Notice that here, we're definitely going to have to deal with the difference of squares. There's only two terms, but there's a positive here, but there's a negative over here. So one thing we could do, we can actually take this and rewrite it like this. And then notice that this we can rewrite as 40 squared. This we can rewrite as 30x squared. And so the A value is 40, the B value is 30x, right? A squared minus B squared equals A minus B, A plus B. So if you apply that, the A value is this, B value is that. Apply it in the formula, you end up with that. Now, are we done over here? No, we're not. Because notice from both of these brackets, we could take out a 10. So the reason why I don't like to take out factors from here is because I initially like to look for any factors that we could take out. So when we got to here, what we could have noticed is we can actually take out 100 from both of these factors and we'd be left with 16 minus 9x squared. And then this would factor into 100, 4 minus 3x, 4 plus 3x, like that. Okay, but if you got to this point over here, if you, don't, if you didn't check for that greatest common factor at the beginning, which I recommend you doing, you could take out a 10 from this bracket, and then you'd be left with 4 minus 3x. And you could take out a 10 from this bracket, you'd be left with 4 plus 3x, and you can multiply the 10s and you end up with that same expression, 
right there. Okay, but I feel like it's just more work to take than 10 out of both brackets, then multiply them, versus just taking out the 100 initially, and then just factoring that as a difference of squares. Okay, another thing you could have done is if you want to keep the variable over here, is you can actually take out, let me keep that answer right there, you could take out a negative 100 from here. Okay, this might be another way that the textbook could show the answer. So when we take out a negative 100, here we'd end up with 9x squared minus 16. And then we'd have negative 100, 3x minus 4, 3x plus 4. Right, this is a difference of squares that factors into those two brackets. So this is another potential answer you could see with this kind of question. This and this, they're actually the same. I'm going to show you why in a sec, but sometimes you may see your textbook give you this answer versus you might get this over here, but it's actually the same thing. So just be careful with these kinds of questions. Sometimes you might see an answer, and we've seen this in previous videos where it looks different, but it's actually the same thing. The reason why this and this are the same is because of this term. So what we can do here, this 4 minus 3x, we can actually, if we wanted to, we could take out a negative 1, and this would, all the signs would change. So it would end up being negative 4 plus 3x, which is like 3x minus 4. And then notice 4 plus 3x, that's the same as 3x plus 4. So this over here, we can just rewrite in different order. And then this times this gives us negative 100. And so we end up with that same expression, okay? So this, one more time, this and this are the same thing. A textbook might give one of these. So don't always think that you got it wrong when you're checking your answer. Sometimes it's just a simple difference in the, uh, in the format. When you actually expand it, it is the same expression.